So yeah, I'll just I'll edit every, every everything out if we need to. Or as far as the start, hold on. Do you need one? I already got one. Though. You already got one. <laughs> Yesterday without a fucking zin. zin. Oh, dude. I think that was the worst part. That and just the one beer. But. That's just not gonna do it, you know. I um, so uh, probably want to bring the mic a little closer. Um, here before you get too fucking invested in it. Cheers, up, mate. Cheers. Con- congrats on making it through another summer, man. <laughs> so it's not it's not for the faint of heart. I know that. Mm-mm. I was talking to uh, I was talking to. Uh, Bridget the other day so like our team posts like a bunch of photos obviously and I think I actually showed that to you the other day yeah um but in our team championship photo we have Skip Coach Nags Yoon and then me and of course Bridget freaking like zooms in to my locker and in my locker I have (laughs) I have two open two open beers a freaking whiskey bottle and then um, a zen, and so that was basically the. That's the, the way. That's they, the day that she found. Yeah, out. that's the day that she found <laughs> out that I that I enjoy nicotine. Yeah, which, yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, what if it you're, is. if you're, I don't know, maybe there should be like a course for like women out there like dating baseball guys. Like, there's there's a there's, uh, there's a very high chance that <laughs> nicotine is involved. Well, especially <laughs> with like the hockey player thing too. I mean, like mm-hmm. it pretty much hockey and baseball players I've pretty much found out like they're very very similar. Yeah, I know. And obviously like anybody that gets into the coaching, like they're just kind of like trying to like hang on for whatever reason. They all everybody has kind of their different whys of why they're why they're doing it, but it's just like yeah, definitely that piece there's just a lot of similarities it seems like. <laughs> and so Ah, yeah, man. I think it's starting to phase out, though. Like, I don't know if you've noticed it. Well, I guess because you've been in high school the last, like, couple years, right? Yeah. See, that's the kind of thing. (laughs) That's the kind of thing we can edit out. (laughs) That's fine. Don't worry about it. It's going to be a shitty setup, but that's okay. I can also scoot up. Um, If we want to put it up here, it's fine. I can scoot up. Copy. And might stay. I hope it does. <laughs> Here, maybe if I move it a little bit, I don't know. I don't know. Am I still picking up? Yeah, you're still picking up. Good. good. Keep, keep okay. Talking. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Okay, I might crank you up just a hair. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, no, I think this will. Oh, no. Dang it! <laughs> Right, next time we'll get the pops on situation locked and loaded. Yeah. Yeah, this this mic stand is so shitty. It's not a good mic stand. No, it's not. I mean, it just came with the mic. Yeah. And I just, you know. And then um you'll wanna be talking into I gotta switch this up. There you go. Yeah, that's this piece. thing. Yeah. So, okay, but yeah, but yeah, like I like I was saying, like I don't know if you noticed, but you know I know when we were in high school, a lot of guys chewed. That's when a lot of guys started chewing. Yeah, because there was always a guy that was eighteen. Yes, but like now that it's like raised, like it's definitely not as prevalent. Like coaches, yes, yeah. but I mean I don't know. I don't know if we had a player this year on our squad that was a regular chewer. Well, even, uh, besides one, never mind. Even amongst like, yeah, I mean that that was definitely a takeaway from the summer of like, and you can look at it how you want to look at it, but like it seems like 
the new the newer players like that are coming in like they don't they definitely don't do things the way that we did them even like 10 years ago like yeah which is kind of well, yeah i mean it is kind of it is nuts and um it's probably a lot better and I, I even like the young coaches that are coming up like it you just do things a little differently like i mean even just co- when i was coaching with skip robbins like that dude that dude could freaking chew snuff I mean, he he could probably like snort it if he really wanted to, <laughs> but like the dude always had had one in. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of the culture that is being brought up. And I mean, the you know the Zins and and the Rogues and whatnot. Like, it seems like they're they're fine. And at least I don't know. I don't know what the science is behind like the nicotine thing, but I don't know either. I know it's all bad for you. <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah <laughs> it can't that, be like, good. Yeah. Well, anyway. Congrats on getting another uh, ring. Yeah. By the way, um, thanks, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah. tell us how that was about, or tell us what that was like. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's obviously, yeah. You, there's no real words to, to, yeah, to have on it. Like, except for the fact, like, yeah. It's. I mean, it's obviously great to win, and like, um, I think when you look at it just from like an organizational piece like when people work hard and they care about something like it definitely it definitely helps right like it's like this when you even like in those small businesses like it helps to have people that care about what is going on and i think um that's what i've really taken away from the last couple summers of just like uh you have a lot of people to care and i think that's that's been the huge takeaway for me and yeah obviously outside of the fact like they're they've been doing it a long time and and they've been doing things yeah it's just good to win so it's like uh like you're talking about like organizational and like top down yes yeah i mean it it, like i'll never forget it like the the fish i and i i'm yeah i think it was it was jeremiah he was like yeah like the fish always stinks from the head always and like it could not ring more true like especially the older that i get like it seems like leaders that like let stuff um kind of let stuff go and it's not necessarily that they're always looking out for something that is that is bad but like the ones that let stuff go that like something comes across their desk and they know about something and like they just think oh well it's you know it's taken care of like more times than not like it's not like it's up to you like anything that happens within the organization like it's up to you and like that type of mindset i feel like even when it trickles like even when it starts at the top it trickles down to everybody within an organization and even if it's a small organization even if it's summer collegiate baseball i mean it just in in all facets that i've been in like education uh and sport mostly yeah it always stinks from the head like it's it's very very true um and it, yeah, that was kind of, that's, those are my big takeaways and they always are. Oh, yeah. well, I liked, um, <clears throat> cause I, I know I heard it from you and I don't know if this is a Brooke thing or not, because I think I saw it on, you know, a couple of his posts, um, about, you know, it's not summer baseball, it's baseball in the summer. Yeah. Cause I think there's, uh, you know, a big mentality that, you know, for a lot of these guys where it's during the summer, it's like, all right. This is fuck around, you know, <laughs> whatever time. Like, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. But, um, you know, I liked your guys' kind of flip on it. was just like, no, it's still baseball. Like, you still got to do good. Yeah. You know, you still got to try and, you know, do all that stuff. But it's like, you know, summer baseball, it's just like you hear that and you're just like, oh, okay. So, like, worthless. Like, <laughs> you know, or, like, I'm just going to, you know, roll it out every day instead of, you know, trying to develop and you know, working on competing, like, in-game. Yeah. You know, it's almost like an excuse to just, yeah, just roll it out. I feel like everybody kind of gets, like, that summer catch vibe, right? Yeah. Like, the, where, yeah, you're going out, and, and I mean, uh, yeah, we would probably be remiss to say, like, yeah, like, some of that is, is part of the experience, but, like, it's definitely, it's, it's important to understand, like, some of these kids don't get coaching. I mean, even from from like the high school all the way up even through their I'm, 
and again, all of these schools are phenomenal and they're full of phenomenal people. But like, if you're not coaching, you're not like coaching is still coaching, right? Like you're still coaching the game. And so like you can give those nuggets to kids in on any sort of platform. It just depends on how you as a leader want to want to do it. And so, um, yeah, I think, I mean, Skip obviously says that quite a bit. He, yeah, it's baseball in the summer and, and, um, there are a lot of takeaways, um, and players. I, I mean, players will respond to that stuff, especially when you like have an environment. Like it, when you create environments, whether it's, it seems like whether it's driveline, whether it's, um, whether it's any of the NEI powerhouses, any of the good Division One baseball program, like um, those, those, those takeaways, like they don't they don't miss on things, and so. Um, and they're always coaching and there's always a reason why they're doing things. And so, no, it's, I mean, just to be part of it is just like, it's, it's, a ref, it's super refreshing. Yeah. Um, and so, but, well, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up uh, driveline because, you know, I think, I think myself included and a lot of people are kind of wrestling with the whole purpose of summer ball when you have these um, training, you know, especially for pitchers. Yeah. You know, I think that's like the number one knock that I hear, you know, from these colleges and these college coaches, you know, they don't want to send their guys out. And that's why the numbers are down. That's why, you know, you're finishing a season with 15 guys and, you know, your pitchers. Is that how many like, you ended up having? Was yes. 15? Yeah. We, we, our last game, we had 15 for a doubleheader, um, 15 players. And the other team, they had 17 and they had playoffs. Was that Moose Jaw? No, I was Swift Current. That is incredible. Yeah, I mean, they were. Well, I mean, like it, we were in a we were in a tough spot as far as like player wise, and you know, I was like looking through. I think I had like thirty five or forty guys play for me this summer. You know, somewhere in that range, like a few guys. It was like a one day, like you know, like one of one of my players at CBC. You know, he lived in Calgary, so when we went to Okotoks, he came in and through two thirds of an inning he was supposed to go in a full inning but we had to get him out of there you know uh you know we had a few of those situations but yeah no it was like bringing in guys like all throughout the year like hey let's you know to finish and then something would happen or they would leave or whatever you know and i think there's environmental uh issues that kind of cause some of that but like you know most of most of the issue like when i was like when i took the job and started recruiting was finding pitching yeah because i'd gone through it before you know my first summer you know and just like realizing like you need like 30 pitchers <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it's it it's it's uh you know it's a different it's a different beast than like when i remember you know playing my last year in that league i mean i think we might have had 30 guys total and they all they they, stuck they all pretty much stayed yeah, there wasn't as much turnover as there is now. So, and I, I don't know. I, yeah, to get back to the point, like, I just kind of wanted to see what you thought about, since you're a pitching coach. Yeah. You did the summer baseball, but you're also pretty knowledgeable with the the training stuff. You yeah. Know, what, what are your thoughts on, you know, summer baseball versus, like, a driveline or a tread or a... Well, I still, like, I mean, I, I still don't think there is anything more valuable than an actual repetition right like so an actual competitive game like rep and like even those even live abs like i i mean i've still and i i should preface this like and you saw me kind of during this when i was when i was doing this at the beginning of like i was kind of i was like this is the way that we need to do it we need to we need to make sure that we are getting guys on a particular plan every week we're freaking doing the on ramping we're gonna like the the plyo balls are the most important thing and making sure that you're getting your throwing time in like that's the most important thing and then making sure like okay well we're gonna do simulated at bat live at bats and i i think there is obviously value to it i mean big leagues do it um you'll see them do it at, at big league spring training but like when it actually comes to like an actual rep like when there's actual it's kind of like sitting at the blackjack table and freaking like Oh, well, me and you were playing with funny money like when we're kids and we're freaking, oh, yeah, I'll push all in here. Well, no, there's like when you're playing at a blackjack table in Vegas, like there's some actual repercussions if you go all in. Like 
you're gonna lose a thousand dollars here and like that hurts like if you have an era if you have an actual rep like that you cannot you cannot recreate that and so i think that's the thing that i would that i would talk to um and that those are my my thoughts on it you can you can get out you get out of it what you put into it right like um and i guess like the we had a couple kids this summer and this has happened it's it's not just an isolated incident but you have kids getting picked up and especially with the nil deals and the amount of hopping that's going with that portal um you have kids getting picked up in the summertime which is a little bit different with the draft push back and now with the the transfer portal you have kids like they need to go and play against those uh those pitch against those hitters so in that way those division one coaches i mean the way that they're doing it is they're going and watching those games and they want to see you pitch against division one bats if you can get division one bats out well they probably going to want you it's a i mean it's pretty simple right like and so um that was my th- those are my big takeaways i mean we had kids that would that developed and let's not let's not you know we're not building a piano here like we're gonna go and compete against live hitters. We're gonna we're gonna watch your pitch counts. We're going to make sure that your innings are monitored. Um, we had just like the best strength and conditioning coach ever. It seems like, um, and that in was Coast Uni. Yeah, that's Uni. Yeah, okay. Uni is just a stud. But it um, it's not like you can't recreate that. Like I I don't know, I don't. I think it's it's there's this black mark on summer baseball, and I, I've been seeing seeing lots of um, different tweets and all sorts of stuff and and feedback where like it it really does not matter to um, these coaches. Which if it doesn't matter to the coaches, it's definitely not going to matter to the players. And so again, it just gives those players a little bit of an out to you know jump out. And I, I think that's if you can. If you as a if you as a coach can get those kids to stay and and really talk to them, hey man, like we are here for your development, and there's more times than not the kid it seems like is going back home and they're partying, and I, I think there are there are still those I think there are still those resources where kids do actually go back and they actually work out, but still again you just can't you can't repeat those live reps, yeah. and so. Um, no, I'm I'm a huge proponent for it. I'm a huge proponent for pitchers and uh, going out, and I, I think there's a huge developmental um, opportunity for those pitchers to go and and play in those summer baseball uh, leagues because Division One NCAA has so many regulations against practice time. Like in the fall, like these kids only get 20 hours a week. Some of them don't. Some of these schools don't necessarily adhere to those rules all the time, which more times than not, those end up being the better schools. But like straight up, you need to like you get an opportunity to work every day on your craft, mm-hmm. and that is you can't with no school or anything like that. That's that's a huge huge developmental opportunity, and so I'm still I'm 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 a big proponent of it. Yeah. Well, and especially since you you know you brought up like guys getting picked up in the summer you know i had same thing where guys came out and played for me and then they you know they were looking for a four year or they were transferred or whatever and you know we they were able to get that opportunity because of playing you know i think what do you (laughs) so i've I've had this thought because you you mentioned the nai or nai nil let's go again (laughs) (laughs) the nil nil deals yeah man like you know that's that I mean, it's, I mean, it's definitely noticeable in the college football scene right now. Yeah. I mean, you think that's going to affect how some players are treated for summer baseball? Yeah, and I, yeah, I, you would imagine there's just going to be. I mean, there are a lot of moving parts in in the market right now. I, you have, and I haven't kept track of all of this, but you have minor league baseball or you have major league baseball that's going against basically a battle against the players association, minor league baseball. Mm -hmm. And those guys are fighting for, um, basically not equal pay, but just minimum wage at least livable. Yeah. Livable, like livable (laughs) wage. Right. So at least, at least least the minimum wage. Yeah. I mean, it's just a nightmare. Well, if, if that happens, if, if the minor league players association, they win, there's there, there would be a good chance that they win. I, again, I, I had, if I had somebody on it, but, 
if they win, what major league organizations that cost major league organizations money. So if that with that being said, like they're going to have less players. This whole thing is mm-hmm. going to get condensed. And when those players are not going to be able to get the money that they could out of the professional organization, well, now when where do those best players go? They have to go into the college ranks and especially with NIL deals again. I mean, those kids are are, they're still making side money even in baseball like they're making side money they're making their those businesses are getting are are sponsoring them um and they're just yeah it's 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 gonna be crazy Uh, the one the other pieces too like the transfer portal like they're it's it's august it's august 20th so a lot of these kids are going to be reporting here soon um there's still like two thousand kids in the portal yeah. That are still looking for Division One opportunities. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good luck. I yeah. mean, <laughs> yeah, that's good. what that, are we talking about? That's been a fun. Uh, that's been a fun thing to track and just to see the amount of Division One. Because I mean, they were at a Division One and they're transferring to another one. Right. Thousands. Right. Thousands. Yep. And then you, <laughs> you encounter kids that are trying to break into that. It's like, well. It's gonna to be tough. <laughs> there are only so many roster spots, bud. Mm-hmm. So if there are a thousand, so if I if I were to put it like, if you're if you're trying to put it in layman's terms, if there are a thousand, if there are a thousand Division One roster spots, and I'm totally undercutting, but yeah. thousand Division One roster spots in the nation, and we have two thousand players that are vying to get some of those spots, um, there's a thousand of you that are not going to get those spots. And that's, and, so, and that's just like a spot on the bench. Just a spot on the bench. Like a bowl yeah, just to be able to compete. Yeah. And like, good luck. I mean, and, and I, that is another, I mean, and why would coaches, why would coaches hammer on that? Why would college coaches hammer on that? Their job is to win. Yep. Well, the issue becomes like these, the kids and the kids that are coming up, like they have this just false reality of like, man, yeah. like. You're not you, no. You're not good enough to get on this roster, period. Yeah, I think I think with the ni the nil and with the transfer portal that that definitely leaves it. It gives the player more control, I guess, which is good. But if you're a coach, because again, there's this huge backlash of you know, these D one guys that are signing kids that are super young, yeah. and then they pull their scholarship when yes. they turn out not good, right? And it's like, you know, sometimes it's like a year before they're supposed to report. Sometimes it's like a couple weeks. It's like, okay, so the player has freedom to do the transfer portal stuff. And then the coaches should also have the freedom to be like, oh, well, there's all these players. Like, I'm going to try to upgrade. I mean, that's just like my kind of thought on it. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. It seems like people are looking for fairness, like inequality. And it's just like when you're in a highly competitive situation um as a lot of these guys are there's gonna be people that get screwed over and there's gonna be things that happen that are just not good but that's that's the risk you got to take if you want to do something great yeah but no i mean um, when you got in this second year in a row and i think kids are just becoming more aware of it as they mm -hmm. as i mean especially with social media social media has just taken yeah taken everything and i mean i if you, whatever yeah. your thoughts are on it but if you like if you don't think that kids are paying attention they absolutely are yeah. we had the second year where an NAI kid who has eligibility left he's going to a big time division one because mm-hmm. he had he freaking balled out in NAI yeah. so like for me as a player like my mentality as a player if I if I was if I was playing again I would just be like I am going to be the best at wherever I go be the best player on that roster i'm just gonna work as hard as work as hard as you can perform and then find out because at the end of the day yeah i mean coaches coaches are bound to contracts for a year and i mean those four-year scholarships don't don't come around it's and it's unfortunate i mean it, it is unfortunate in the fact that like i think it what it does tell kids and student athletes and their parents it tells them like well it's okay to it's okay to jump ship which on the other hand like the market is set up for that yeah like that's if you don't like it play better type thing right like and so well it 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 definitely enhances like the theoretically the best player should play if you go and you have a bad year 
scholarship pulled transfer portal. But if you go and you have a good year, you could transfer to a better spot better school. to increase your draft stock. You know, like, yeah, that, it's, the, it's the problem with freedom. Yeah. Like, it is more free. Yes. But with more freedom comes more stuff that more happens risk. that yeah. you're not going to like if yeah. you don't perform, you know. It, it's becoming, yeah, it's, it's always weird because you have, you have, it, I mean, it's more based on capitalism, right? So, like, you have, you have a big time entity like Major League Baseball that is ran purely on capitalism. And then you have these NCAA and like NAIA that are governing bodies where it's ran more like, oh, well, it's about we need to make sure that we have opportunity for these. Yeah. And that's not what it, that's not what it really is. Um, chances just don't come up and they shouldn't. Not everybody gets to play. That's just plain and simple. Well, you, not everybody should play. No, like, not everybody <laughs> should play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, yeah, we obviously had some conversations this summer. Yeah, just like, <laughs> yeah, how, you know, like where, yeah, what, what are we doing with, where is yeah. this? How, how is, how is, how is this? I mean, there, there there's still plenty of roster spots. Yeah, for guys. Oh my gosh. To the point where you're like, how? Is, yeah, <laughs> you know, like that. That question has come up a lot more recently than I think when we were playing because. Yeah. I mean, we both played NWAX, and NWAX is, you know, like lower end of the um, JUCO scale, in my opinion, at least. Yes. Like, yeah, our guys were dogs. Like, <laughs> you know, and the guys I played against, like, every team in that league had some guys that were good, which means that guys that aren't good aren't they can't. Are going to play. But now it's like, all right, there's, there's definitely an opportunity, which is good because sometimes it just takes guys a little bit more time to develop. But, you know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, so your first summer back in the great north, what, I mean, oh, what do we got? Canada? Oh, dude. <laughs> I love Canada. I, I, anybody that has a chance to go live in another country for free to do baseball or just like anything that you like enjoy, like that's what, that's how I approached it. It's like, hey, here's an opportunity. Like I don't give a shit about the money. Like the money was pretty ass <laughs> like i mean it's fine like i i'm not uh, i'm not driven by money all right i'm driven by opportunity and you know what i saw was an opportunity to go back to my uh a place that i played summer ball and in a league that i really enjoyed uh when i was a player and it was awesome you know you get to live in another country your money's different you know i gotta eat pierogi and poutine all the time <laughs> like you know and it's it's fun uh it was different yeah. Uh, it wasn't all good like you know I had, yeah it was it was a tough uh, it was a tough summer yeah as far as like just the baseball and like the job side of it I mean I was working so hard because <laughs> <laughs> I was the only coach yeah <laughs> and you know I had an assistant coach that uh, was supposed to come up and didn't end up coming and, you know I had a couple guys help fill in and they were great like Cam you know, from Calgary, he's he's a stud, and Phil, Phil was uh, our GM, and him and his brother Cordy, uh, Corey came and helped out, and those were the best. Like I can go through anything with, you know, guys that I like because it's like, hey, you have somebody to vent to. Yeah. But when you're solo, and you're doing everything, <laughs> including like field maintenance, travel, stuff like that. And then at the end of the after a game where you know we lost a lot of games this year, so it's like after, <laughs> after a particularly bad loss, it's like I got beers and I'm just like, all right, I'll just drink alone, I guess. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there was a time, uh, I think I think the lowest point of the summer, so <laughs> uh, we got beat pretty bad. I think it was in one of our losing streaks, and I think. Uh, like it was just a particularly bad loss. I had some guys that were, you know, either like hurt or they were just like, you know, it was it was tough for the team as well, you know, with the, the morale, and just for me because there was just so much other stuff. Like that's the other thing that people don't realize. Like normally in the head coaching, like I think you're in a good setup where it's like you got guys that can kind of. Um, Diverse, I don't know, yeah. delegate. You a lot of resources. Yeah, yeah. A, lot there of re a lot of resources. So like, it was just like all this crap was just like raining down. And I remember going home and I was 
like staying in the basement and it's like concrete stairs down there and I'm like texting and it's like a kid that's like losing his mind and some other kid like has a family <laughs> emergency and I'm just trying to deal with it and I shorted it one step and I had a popsicle in my hand <laughs> <laughs> and I I just like wasn't expecting the other step so I fell and I hit my knee so hard <laughs> like really really hard and <laughs> luckily my phone was away because i just like started pacing i was like don't punch the concrete you're gonna break your hand <laughs> like in my head but i need to do something so i took my popsicle and i gronk spiked it and it exploded <laughs> like <laughs> i mean vaporized <laughs> um and then yeah like i think we got to win the next day because i came back and i told the guys i was like guys just want you to know like this really funny thing that happened like at the time i was so pissed <laughs> but it's you know it was a it was a it was a funny little scene and then the other the other time yeah i launched two objects so one was that popsicle and then uh, the second time was my skull cap because uh i had a starter from uh the czech republic yeah yeah good uh, awesome dude okay but he's he was coming in and pitching he was he was talking to some schools and we we're trying to get him to a place so started him, and you know, um, he his first outing he did really well, but then he got to like eighty pitches, and that's when you know that was when he was exhausted basically, and you know stuff came out. So I knew that, and <laughs> you know it's like he's at mid seventies I think, and going out to like the fifth inning, and so I go tell my reliever like, hey, be ready, you're the next guy up. He's at like seventy five pitches. All right, so just be ready. And he goes, okay, I'm going to go run to the bathroom. And, like, he's out there, like, we're about ready to throw pitch one of that inning. I was like, I mean, hustle. Like, get your ass going. Yes. And he just disappeared. Oh, my God. And then the wheels started falling off, and he comes, like, he finally comes back in the dugout after my first mound visit. So he's at, like, 90 pitches at this point. And I look at him, I was like, Go warm up. <laughs> like, no. And he, he slowly walks over there. He's got food or something. He doesn't even have his jersey on. Oh. Puts his jersey on all nice nonchalant. Like a couple more batters get on. And I look down. He still hasn't thrown a warm up pitch. And so I'm just going into stall tactic mode. Yes. Like I'm going to go talk to the umpire about some bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, and, you know, get him out. And I think he's like right at 100 pitches. And, like, I had this thing where I'm, like, I'm not starting a new batter for any of these guys over 100. Right. And, like, going to work into it, you know, trying to do it as smart as I can as, you know, a dumb hitting coach. (laughs) Okay. And I look down. I'm, like, dude, you've got to be ready. He's, like, I'll be ready after this batter. And so this batter just works a full count, fouls off, like, three or four pitches, and then hits a bases clearing double. Oh, my gosh. And so all those runs are his, and I go out and pull him. You know, whatever. I'm walking back, and as soon as I walked back, I took my skull cap and I threw it against the the dugout. <laughs> Brought all the pitchers down to the <laughs> down to the bullpen. It was like, guys, <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> when I tell you, you're up. Like, you know. Uh-huh. And I think he learned from me. He actually, you know, he ended up starting for me the rest of the year. And did really well. You know, it's 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 the it's. It's working with young kids. Oh my gosh! And it's that's the coaching side of it, you yeah. know, that you got to deal with, which is a lot easier when you have multiple. <laughs> but you know, hey, you gotta you gotta coach them up when you can. Yeah, no and doubt. And so, um, but yeah, you know, that was that was like that was like within our team, and then the league. You know, I think I told you about all that other Canada Day stuff, like <laughs> trying to trying to start some shit. But I mean, yeah, it was. It was a good, really good learning experience. I mean, we talk a lot about like leadership and things like that, and you know that was one of the things that I learned like personally about like, man, I got I got a ways to go, yeah. you know. And it was a good environment for that, you know the, um, you know for me to do some personal self growth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like you know I'm, I'm I'll go into my next head coaching uh, a lot better, I think because of it so how much i mean i guess like how much does like how tactical are you when you're making your decisions i guess you know it started out like you know trying to 
utilize, you know, whatever analytics I had available, which was none. <laughs> it was just like it was just like my brain going like, okay, you know, we got a runner on second, third, you know, get the force and play, maybe walk, you know, stuff like that. You know, I would try to do it. But when you have limited resources, and by resources I mean players and pitchers specifically, yeah, you can't think that way. No, you have to think of it's survival. Yeah, it's like finish the game because <laughs> and without putting a kid in a bad situation like you know i've and other other teams in the league like you know i don't want to throw shade or anything like that like you know I, everybody's you know they're they're doing the best they can and they're doing you know they're doing what they think is good for the kids which is good you know i got no problems but like the way i was running it like if a, if a pitcher went two innings he's getting a day off yeah like i'm not throwing right. the next day like you know and for our guys it was like a lot of guys would throw an inning but it'd be like 40 pitches that kid ain't throwing for like two or three days and it's not because like oh you know he shit the bed like you can't think that way it's like no i need to use this guy because the other guys you know they can't go out there and throw you know 10 innings a week (laughs) you know what i mean like um yeah so i mean it's it, it definitely was a survival mindset you know once we hit july july was brutal the schedule this year like the like when i played it was a 48 game season and a lot of the people i talked to especially over in the saskatchewan side of it you know owners coaches they loved it it was perfect you get an adequate number of days off you know it helps because these are small towns and you know they're small teams like they can't you know have 40 guys like they don't have the host families yeah or the resources for it right so we're trying to do a 56 game season with 26 guys like that's that's where they wanted the roster right which and is i mean it, you can't it's just not it's it's not it's realistic. not possible. it's not realistic especially when you don't have a trainer hit like not just our place but like most of these places there was one one team in the Saskatchewan side that had a full time trainer, and he was a really cool dude, and you know, super grateful to him because, like, he told me early in the year, he's like, if your guys need Anything. treatment, send them over. So every time we played Regina, it was like, all right, go, go, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go. <laughs> guys, you got to, like, any of you guys that need like work, like, go do that, or you know, it's so important, man. It's I wonder, it's so, vital. Yeah, like, I mean, it's obviously it comes down to a dollars and cents thing. So like, I was. I, I mean, our they they showed it during the championship game, and it was like we set a they set a record this year. The organization set a record this year for like six it was sixty one thousand total or something like that. Your guys, right? Yeah, for the total attendance on the year. And so like, let's just say that they're charging at like I don't know fifteen dollars a ticket. Like that's like upwards of nine hundred thousand dollars. Like right in between like eight hundred thousand nine hundred thousand dollars. Like, that alone, like, that has to be, attendance is so important. Yes. So, like, if you look if you look at it, like, I mean, even, like, in Okotoks, like, there's probably a reason why they're able to have success on a, on a consistent basis. And so, like, a lot of it has to, I would imagine, comes from attendance. Oh, 100%. Like, <laughs> if you're, if you aren't trying to run it like a business, I think and make money and generate revenue that team's gonna be in a tough spot especially in today's summer baseball landscape with the amount of leagues like that's the other thing that's changed is like i mean there are so many were there that many like that was a thing Uh, there's no way were there that many when we were playing because i know like there are a couple that are coming up like you have the 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 mid or pioneer league wasn't a thing they had like the there's like a midwest league that is played when I so when I was at Bellevue as a player the only league that was around it was called like the Mink and it's still around mm-hmm. but now it's like there's the Mink and then there's like a Kansas league and then there was the Expedition League and now it's the independent like there's four just in the Midwest just just in that area yeah it and just... it's like okay and then that's that's where like the the talent level goes like down 
because I mean, yeah, there's. Well, it's just like I mean, I guess it's just like I mean, it is. It's just like anything, right? Like of, of. Even in colleges, like even in colleges, some some colleges you we would call them enrollment boosters. Same thing for some of those small businesses of of where they're trying to turn a profit, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, in any sort of business, like you cannot you cannot expect to sustain any sort of success or longevity if you don't have relationships and people in like at the for, forefront of why your organization is doing it because yeah. yeah that's those are the situations that you get put in it's, it's tough and I, I think we're on the same page of like there are just too many there are way too yes. many yeah 100% there I mean when way you're too many when you're struggling to find players to play like like the you know the WCBL. That's a good league. Yeah. There's a lot of good ball players in that league. Yeah. You know it's been that way for a while, and that league's been going for like 70 years. Yeah, it's a long you time. Um, Longer than West when Coast you are, <laughs> when you are struggling to find players, even though I got the job late, you know, had to do that whole recruiting in a couple months. Like that is that's not that that's a that's a sign, like that there's too many opportunities for too few people, and it's something like baseball where there should be like way way more baseball players than there are opportunities just to keep the talent level and just the threshold like high to get to the next level yeah yeah no there's too many <laughs> there's just, too many teams there's man. too many and you know i think uh i you know i i think it, it, on a long enough timeline every like things like this tend to self-correct you know this summer you know the expedition league folded halfway through the year yeah just for that reason you know, yeah. they're trying to run 63 or 64 game season there's five teams in the league and like you know they had like i, I looked at one roster before because i was thinking that it could happen just because yeah. i had experience in the league and i was like if these teams fold like maybe get some players for my league yeah <laughs> you know like <laughs> that's, right and like i was just like looking at some of these rosters and i saw one roster is this they were trying to go a 64 game season. They had eight listed pitchers. <laughs> Playing six days a week the entire year with a lot of sevens or seven day a weeks. I mean, we even. God, it's our, incredible, man. The way our schedule, I mean, even like ours, like that league is stable. It's, you know, the teams and the coaches there, they, you know, they have a pretty good idea what they're doing. But, I mean,. It was July was brutal. June was fine. All right, we had a lot of days off, but all those games got pushed back to June. So like June, we were trying to attack June with like twenty six ball players, and I knew guys were going to be leaving in July. You know, during that year or during that little stretch, and so like trying to plan and like you know this guy's going to leave this day, this guy's going to leave this day, bring in somebody here, bring in somebody yes. here. Yeah, that's I the mean, way to do it. it. Yeah, that's the only way, and like. Man, we had that first week. So we started off July with a double header in two different cities. Saw that. Yep. <laughs> and that was the day. Well, I talked to you. Yeah. <laughs> we should probably go over that <laughs> thing again. So just for the record, <laughs> yes, we played a double header in two different cities. It was a scheduled double header because Canada Day, you know, July first. That's their big draw. Like. I feel like I should. Rem- I feel like I should tell people to like. So I know nothing about the we- or Western Canadian Baseball League, but let's just say can- Canada is vast. There, there is no town that's close to one another. Period. Yeah. So, the fact that you have two nines, mm-hmm. two nine inning games in two separate cities, in Canada, in a summer baseball league, it's. I don't care if they were like. Uh, right next one to was other. a suburb <laughs> suburb dude like that is like uh, that is one of the most egregious <laughs> like scheduling errors i've ever seen i don't i mean i haven't talked to a single person besides one guy <laughs> we'll get to we haven't talked to a single college like coach or player that's like yeah that seems like a great idea that's a good idea yeah let's just like <laughs> yeah let's just do that incredible yeah man like i don't i mean prof- i like they, they don't even do that the 
professional level. Right. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like to I, make up if, a game. Like if that's what, if that, right. Not even let to alone make a, be scheduled. Be scheduled. It's just, it's <laughs> so, it's so incredibly ridiculous. Like those independent baseball leagues don't, don't do that. Yeah. Independent baseball leagues don't 10 do out that. of 10 and cannot need recommend. to make the money. <laughs> like they have to pay players in those leagues mm-hmm. and they wouldn't do that because they know that that's just a logistical nightmare and the, the risk of injury is just off the charts. And, norm- and one of my guys, <sighs> I, you know, wasn't directly hurt because the other thing that made that day even worse is like, dude, I, I had it. Like I, I gave us a chance. <laughs> like, like as far as like with the roster and like, because once I showed up and I found out that stuff was happening, like I had a feeling I was gonna have to recruit, you know, throughout the year. Yeah. But I saw that and I just ramped it up. Still, I mean, I was still in full on like, yo, I'm getting a team. And they're like, well, we already got 26. I'm like, dude, we need like 40. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I I am trying to get through this day not playing a single player in both games. Like, you know, ever like play a game full new team play the second game and right. i was like close you know i was gonna have um my first baseman he was gonna play both just because he wanted to he's an older dude and yeah you know, he's playing in the draft league now i think hopefully if his visa got squared away but um yeah I had a chance and it was like right in the middle of a stretch too where we had like three games before that and then we we're gonna do that and then we we're gonna play another two games and then we we're gonna get a day off and then go on our alberta trip okay so i mean i had like close to 30 guys Okay, I had a guy that was going to come in and help out, you know, um, if possible. But the night before, we're in Swift Current, which is a three and a half hour drive, because we don't stay anywhere either. Like we played the away game and then we drive back home. Okay, so we go there and we have a twelve inning, just <laughs> shit show. <laughs> I use all my pitchers. My new guy that I was going to start on Canada Day had to use him for like two innings. Because, like, I mean, we got a chance to win, and it's like, oh, okay, like, you know, whatever, and then I'll figure out a way for tomorrow. We end up losing that game because there's a fucking umpire setting screens on my second baseman. <laughs> <laughs> and like, <laughs> dude, like, perfect pick and rolls. I was just mad at the situation. I knew I was going to have nobody for tomorrow, and, you know, I end up getting ejected, at, like, a post game because I went out there and I wore them out. And that, yeah. was, that was the other thing, like, Normally, the the umpiring up there, it's like it's the worst. Like, <laughs> there's no question, it is by far the worst. And like, I like all those guys, and I don't want to be, you know, the anti, you know, whatever. But holy shit, <laughs> 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 like whatever. So I had I went out there, and you know, wore him out. And I was thinking it kind of worked out because I was like, oh, post game, like I got to serve a game. I don't have an assistant coach. Like we're gonna have to forfeit. And everybody, and then it's gonna draw, you know, light to it. Like, oh my god, like why? You... That didn't work because <laughs> they were like, no, you're playing. And I was like, I'll play if we want to, because I remember I called after the game, text, uh, you know, I'm texting everybody. It's like I have three pitchers for 18 innings tomorrow. Like it's gonna be tough to get through one of these games. Two is like impossible. And you know, uh, Phil. You know, being a former coach in, in the college, like, he had a great amount of feel. Um, he was like, yeah, no, they, we got to, we got to, like, escalate this to, like, the president and be like, dude, we got to do something. Yeah. So, and this was at 1230 at night. So, we got on the bus, three and a half hour drive, get back in Weyburn at four in the morning. Our bus leaves at nine the next morning to go play our first game in Regina. And I wake up to a text message. It's like, all right, this is the message from... Uh, the league president, and basically he was saying like, oh, I'm sure he's exaggerating. You know, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Just go play him. And that's when, that's when I got felt like I was backed into a corner. Yeah. And when I get backed into a corner, I lash out irrationally and in all directions because that's the Kern's way. (laughs) So I was, you know, I was preparing for that situation, which is I like to be prepared. And so I called you, you know, I talked to um, Cam, who I had a bunch of players, uh, a bunch of his guys play for me this summer. And I was just like, what, what should I do? Like, here, here are some of the options that I'm thinking of. 
you know, option one. <laughs> like, you know, we play the first game and then I get ejected at the plate meeting in the second game. We forfeit the game because there's no coach. Um, you know, option two, we go play the first game. We go to Boston Pizza and then I just get drunk <laughs> with my players and we just tell the bus driver, like, you can go to a moose shop if you want. <laughs> you know, you, or you can just like hang out here or you can take us back. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, we ain't going to moose shop. <laughs> And, um, like, the best piece of advice I got this summer is, like, ask the players. And that's exactly what we did. Put it to a vote. And I told them the situation. I was like, look, we got three guys. They ain't going to get us through. Okay. So, position players, like, you would have to throw today. And, you know, a couple of you guys just to get the game in, like, you know, might have to go more. Which is, a, like, you never want to throw a position player because if that kid gets hurt, that comes back on you, and 100%. then now I don't get a job. One hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yes. So, anyways, I I laid it all out. I told them exactly. I was like, if you guys want to play one today, which is the max that we should be playing, I will make it happen. Uh, if you guys want to do two, we'll do it. And like to their credit, like you know, my guys, like they voted. You know, it was a pretty significant majority. There was a couple that you know didn't want to do it which fair enough like i had no place no blame <laughs> like no issue like i yeah there's no way i probably would have been one of the guys been like nah this is stupid yeah but like the majority of the players voted to play two and i was like all right then as your leader we're gonna play two and <laughs> we're gonna get through it and i'm gonna like stay away from me because i'm gonna be miserable and i want you guys to have fun <laughs> and just like try to enjoy as much as you can and so, yeah, we we played too, and I called the president between it between the games because he ghosted me, and just chewed him out. <laughs> he didn't like that at all, and was talking all sorts of shit. <laughs> but hey, we did it, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, we didn't even get food. Really? No. They did you, what? Because the, the everything was closed. Everything did you, closes did you down. Win so either of those games? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> we did not. <laughs> we uh, we lost both, and um, yeah, because everything closes down up there. Like, oh, I got them food between games. Yeah. So it took the credit card. I don't even think I was supposed to, but I was like, "There's no shot." Like, you know, we're getting something. Yeah. So um, after the game, though, uh, our vice pres, you know, brought some beer um, for the bus and pass it around because that's what it, what's it's up Canada. there and so we had a couple beers on the bus and you know good little post game recovery <laughs> and then got ready to play the next day it's i mean it's one of the it's yeah i mean the food thing it's such a so imperative you get, and a mm. lot of those i mean it's a lot of those towns a lot of those small towns their businesses close Yep. And, like that's an that's a real issue and like finding you got to be able to find some sort of resource in order to get food. Yeah. And that and that I I think I can understand that a little bit with this league cuz that that's never been a thing. And this right. league's been going on forever. Right. It's like you know, kind of the same thing, but the COVID restrictions and everything post COVID like I don't know what it is and it could be just like the workers and stuff too, like you know, not having the support to like keep them open. Yeah. But, like, we didn't, uh, yeah, there was a lot of times we'd play a game and we didn't no make it in time, so, like, we didn't get food. No food. And that was, like, my suggestion was, like, hey, in the future, like, when you visit a team, they, they should got, provide food at food. the field because yeah. we have to go back home. Right. Like, provide the food, go home. Yeah, because that would make sense. Yeah. Alan! Oh, What's up, dude? Hey. What's up? I feel like I'm interrupting something. No, we're you podcasting. You just dude. made it. You made it right in time. Yes, you did. Just talking all sorts of smack. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How was volunteering? You look like you're sweating. Yeah, it's 100 degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half hours. Of, hey, good uh, thing you made it in time, like to go uh, uh, jet skiing or water to go wakeboarding. Water. Yeah, wakeboarding. <laughs> Why not? Still going? I don't know. I'm a, I don't know. I don't. I'm not gonna be able to make it. I gotta I, leave. I doubt we're going this 
like, wake up. You never know. It's the Ross. It's like prom time. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, dude. You gotta run to Terry's. We've gone later. You gotta move probably like 10 things. You gotta move like the RV that they just bought. The other two. Yeah. Uh, I drove I drove past yeah. their place. There's so much shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> the boat's probably stuck in the back. Oh, yeah. So, that's a lot of moving. Uh, Where is their place? Uh, they're up They're up past mom and dad's. So, like, you, you like... How much... I mean, like, like if we're talking about how much stuff is at that joint... Dude, it's just, nice. They just bought another RV. Oh, you're yeah, talking about Bailey, Terry's? No, I'm talking about Bailey and Rob's. Oh. Their, their place is nice. Oh, really? Bailey doesn't put up with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> they got a nice living room. No, <laughs> like, their spot's nice. Yeah. I could... You could live there. Absolutely, yeah. hundred percent. They got a big kitchen. They got a backyard with a with a storage shed. It's a good a big spot. Old garage. It's, it's awesome. Like, oh, really? It's like not like a huge backyard, but it's like so it's manageable decent. to have like parties and like things back. There. Oh, sick. Yeah. Terry's place is. There's a lot. There's of, a lot of shit. Oh yeah, I drove past it the other night or last night. Uh, to get gas, you know, coming back with dad, and I drove past, and it's just like vehicle central. That there, there isn't an open spot in that hole. <laughs> Dude, that place, a lot of memories. Yup, that uh, RV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Well, yep. So that RV's never been used. They don't. Okay, it's been out. used. Well, <laughs> they didn't. It hasn't been used. Not for camping. It hasn't been camping. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. There's so many fucking dogs in there. Yeah. At this place? At your. Dude, the aquatic dog center? Day. Oh, yeah. So these dogs run easily over 200. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, it's fun. Sounds amazing. Yeah. I almost it. committed theft about like a hundred times at least. For, For the dog. dogs? Yeah, add a, yeah. Do- add a dog to this Dude, place. There's like two Dalmatians. You never see Dalmatians. Almost two those. Yeah. There's like three or four German Shepherds. There's one Husky. That Husky had to have been hot. Oh, 100%. That yeah. was so fucking... Di- oh, dying. Yeah, no, they left early. We're still recording. Or we're recording. Probably not a good idea to check like an hour in to make sure we're recording, but we're recording. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> wow. Just the yeah, yeah baseball just the stuff. Summer, Breaking down the summer. The summer baseball scene. Sports, yay. It's it's been good though. It's been a good little podcast. Not bad. You know. I feel like I'm ruining it. You are not ruining it. You're just making it better. Yeah. We need you to be like get you like a mic and have you like set up, you know, like pop in, like, hey, I need something looked up. <laughs> <laughs> just tell us we're full of shit. <laughs> Never mind, Alan. Well, do, hey, the thing is, yeah, the thing is, is like, this is actually a decent little setup. Like, look, look what we got here. You know, Pops on Central. We got the Yoshi. Got the critters over here. The this? Yeah. It was sitting here. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> no. Oh, damn it. No. Yeah. Dude, I am. There's food up at the parents. You want to go up to mom and dad's? You have to drive up to Spokane. She yells at me less when there's other Dude, people there. It's so <laughs> great. I was, I was there with you. Yeah. So great. That was, it was fine. Yeah, I don't want to go in there without, you know, oh. <laughs> the non family member. Come in with like a. I mean, you know, it's like a shield. Racist, yeah, so. uh, it's just to like tie. It's, just, it's like a shield. It's like <laughs> yeah. just, you're bringing in a shield. Exactly. It's a carry shield. It, it's a carry shield. <laughs> Iraq shield. Ickum. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Take me to Silverwood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's so funny. <laughs> would he laugh? Oh, I guarantee you, laugh. <laughs> he better laugh. He's, you know, he's in a dark pit of despair if he freaking doesn't, he doesn't. laugh. He came home yesterday and he fucking went gambling again without me. Oh, son of a bitch! I think he lost like four. Four hundred. Good uh, lord. Like oh no. Just typical Ryan. Just, yeah, just I losing. I make money, like, eh, a little more. Yeah. yeah. And then... When you're on a heater, you don't get off the heater. Yeah. Yeah, but well, okay. Like, if, I mean, if you put 60 out there because you're pressing, like, a dumbass, and then you, and then you hit 11, and then the dealer has, like, a 5 or whatever, then you double that, and you hit, like, a fucking 4 or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. You're fucked. And then have, like, have them again. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, well, Bo, I wanted to w- one more topic before we go. Okay. Okay. What do you think? And I thought about this a lot this summer because, you know, I'm in my head. Okay. And I think I told you this, but I think there is a serious, like, opportunity. Okay. For college baseball to start April 1st and go until August and play during the summer. Well, especially now. Yeah. 100%. I, I mean, I don't know if you. I don't know if they do. They go till August. It would mostly depend on the draft. I mean, that makes sense. Like, you go. You start in April. You play until through through July or whenever the draft is because the draft is super late now. Um, yes. And it needs to happen. Like, especially. And not that California or Texas cares, but mm-hmm. those are your best months to play baseball. Yes. And. Why wouldn't why wouldn't you play well, during those months? I was, I think I was looking at some of the attendances for like the SEC schools. Yeah, thousands, thousands of people, more than like you can get for, um, you know, any any of the places we have coached at or yeah. played or whatever. So like, if you're able to do that like for an entire summer, like. Because one, you can increase your games. Yes. Because you got more availability. So, like, you're charging attendance there. It's like, if you're averaging that much, like, in the springtime when it's not as, like, like it's just shittier weather. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, yeah. you, you play those early spring games in front of, like, 10 people because it's 40 degrees. Yeah. Nobody's wanting to go. Yeah. But if you do that during the summer oh. and run, like, it would be awesome for everything. Yes. Because you don't have to worry about the whole summer baseball. It's like, no, this is baseball. Yes. You're playing for your college. Like, if you don't win, you suck. Correct. You know? <laughs> and then, you know, with all the restrictions in the fall anyways, like, you just say, like, well, we don't really practice in the fall. Like, that's our off time. Like, the baseball player you would do... actually get an off season. Well, yeah. you And then you do a spring train. Yeah. I mean, you do a – you could do a spring training starting in February. And you have two months, basically, like, that's your fall baseball. And then you just play on through. Like, yeah. the the big discrepancy for me is, like, when a guy goes in in the fall, like, li- li- a lot of it has to do with arms, right? So, like, a pitcher goes in the fall, and then they do this fall baseball league where they do scrimmages and whatnot, and then they take this break. Mm-hmm. And through the winter, which, yeah, I mean, the winter is definitely a time to take a break. But then they ramp back up and, like, they go into this... I mean, they start in, like, January or or whatever. And then they stop in May, like, right as soon as... Or June for the ones that make make it It's a start, stop, start. Yeah, which instead of just... No, especially (laughs) in baseball. Like, no, you play from the start of the new year through July or August. I mean, it would probably be July just because of the draft. And then you have your fall that's meant for football yep and um you know the the winter months don't last that long it goes so you what you'd have you'd have basically august august september october november december you have five months and then the rest of the year you're playing baseball yeah and yeah well and then what what other championship is going on in july none i mean i'm sure there are but like ones that are can compete yeah i mean college world series yeah no it wouldn't. I mean, Chelly, Chelly's going Chelly finishes in, June, in June, and then NBA finishes in June. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, as far as money goes, you'd probably, you're probably, everybody's probably going to make more money. Yeah, that's why. I, th- I mean, and plus, like, you know, because they talk about like, you know, there's no class in the summer. It's like, dude, all right, everybody's taking classes year round now. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. I, Most kids, especially with weird. the on with the online the stuff. online stuff. Oh my gosh! And even if the yes. summer is online, like one the capability like COVID made the capability of online school just like everybody's got to have it. Yeah. And two, like you know, during the rest of the year, it's like you got fall ball, you got winter, you got spring. Okay, when are those kids supposed to take a lap or do those classes that require them to be gone? Like they're they're not supposed like that was the thing. When I was playing, it's like, oh, you want to do this degree? Well, you're going to be missing a lot of time, and yeah. you can't miss, you know, time, or else you're not going to play. And you know, it's like, okay, tr- well, now you have a fall. Like, you do all of your science, and math in the fall, and then 
you know, it's like summer's yeah. the play. Yeah, it's better for it's better for the player for sure. Yes. Um, you know, I didn't do a math degree because of baseball, which yeah. is probably I mean, it is what it is. Like you either make it work or you don't. But yeah, I mean, there are definitely factors that go into making a decision to. Um, play baseball or pl- not play baseball and a part of it is academic yeah and so no I'm with you I'm with you I think it's a good idea I think I'm, I think it's a slam dunk especially for the quarter systems yeah uh, I mean NWAC why they don't play I, the NWAC in the northwest why they don't play into through June is beyond me they keep their kids till the middle of June anyway yeah play through June I mm-hmm. mean the only thing you could say is graduation but if you care about junior college graduation, yeah. I judge you a little like, bit. Like, I don't even, I didn't even go, like, I got my AA in the mail. Doesn't matter. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it doesn't like, matter. Not, like, baseball, <laughs> like, I would say 90, 95% of those baseball players that go and play at the junior college level, and because the CC, well, I, all of junior college is on that. Why wouldn't you play in, why wouldn't you play in the gym? Well, and it gives you, like, because we were at Wenatchee, right? Where yeah. we played in the spring. And we got nobody. Nobody. Except for parents miserable. and family. Because, yeah, it's, it's cold. It's miserable We're, cold. like, shoveling snow off, yes. you know, stuff like that. Start and then they have a summer baseball oh, team. Epic. That, they play on that same field in the same environment epic. all that stuff. And they are averaging mad amount of fans. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. Well, I think, I mean, it makes sense in the way where it's like, yes, it's been this way forever. But, like, if you're able to, like, adapt and, like, change to the new thing, like, that's where opportunity is. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's, like, it's an opportunity to make the baseball program seem less of, like, you know, uh, basically make them seem more like a priority or, like, an asset. Because all of a sudden you're generating revenue from, like, ticket sales to baseball games. Yeah. And it's, like, oh, okay. You know. Because we've both experienced it where it's, like, all right, you know, we don't. We have a baseball team. It just costs money. Yeah. You know, even though it doesn't because you're getting guys from all over the Everywhere. place that are paying tuition. That are paying your tuition. That would never Enrollment sniff. boosters. Yes. Okay. Well, now you're actually getting more. Because you're getting attendance to pay to be <laughs> on your facility. Yeah. And that's like a direct, like, no, these people are coming here to watch this. Like, these are direct financial gains. Gains. No, no question. But best prospect of the summer from WCBL. Who do you got? Best, best prospect? Best player. Oh, dude, uh, Salazar. Where, which he, one is he? Oh, he was playing. He was the third baseman for uh, Med Hat, and he got picked up to go play in the Mexican League this summer. And, okay. like, dude, this kid raked. Really? Where's he from? I don't know, but, <laughs> like, d- a different planet. <laughs> <laughs> like, d- I don't – we play the first – because we, we played uh, Med Hat later in June. That was when we first did, and we did, like, a two- or three-game set with him. He didn't get out. Really? Yeah. And it wasn't just like little things or he was running. No, it was balls in the gap, off the wall, over the wall. Like this kid raked. Gross. Yes. And he's down in the Mex. I guess. Mexican League? Yeah. There's like a Professional Mexican Professional baseball? League. Yep. Oh, because he was a, you don't know where he's from. No, no clue. Probably one of those NAIA kids. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, he, <laughs> I guess, because uh, I was, you know, close with the, the med hat coach, you know, for yeah. the summer. Yeah. Talking about it. And he was telling me, like, he went down there and his first day, I think he hit for, like, the cycle or some crazy. <laughs> like, dude, rakes. <laughs> yeah. Best hitter uh, I might have seen, you know, um, in any of those leagues. Really? Yeah. It's like uh, it's like a Cody Kale, but with, like, attributes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Some real so, attributes. So, what about uh, West Coast League? Uh, the sharp kid from Jacob Sharp from Rid, uh, Ridgefield. Ridgefield. He Is he the one Ridgefield. that got the MVP? He, I think he ended Well, they ended up doing a co-MVP. With, yeah. And that was, the other kid was really good, too. Uh, sharp was could really, really hit. And he could play. He's a catcher, too. Oh, um, that's... He's he's really good. I, draft you, guy? UNLV, UNLV, it seems like they... They got a freaking steal. They got a, they got a good, good ball This player. kid's legit. Is he going into his freshman year? Uh, no, he's he was a junior college kid. Oh. And then um, the Joe, there was one other kid that was that was pretty good too, and he could play. He could just play. Uh, Joe Ichiro Oyama. He's going to UC Irvine. Kid could freaking fly. 
has a super toolsy. Mm-hmm. Um, but he kind of reminded me of that. Uh, the who was the kid that played in the Capes this summer from? Oh, Hollywood. the dude. Yeah, uh, I can never. Yeah, he's just super smooth with I know, it. I know super exactly quick, but he reminded about. me a lot of him. And he like that yeah. kid was so fast. He was so good. He stole like every. He got on because we played them earlier, and I. I mean, we might have got him out. But, like, if he was on base, he was stealing, like, one, uh, probably two Riku, bags. Nu- Riku? No Shudu. No, sh- no, sh- no Shida. I think it's Riku. Riku Nushida. Yeah. And the kid, I mean, he killed it over in the Cape, but <sighs> coming from NWAC, really basically. Yeah, really good. <laughs> um, yeah. So. All right, man. Well, well good thank, deal. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, no, I think that'll be uh, that'll be fun. So I'll, I'll chop it up and see what we can put out. And, Dope. You know, I'll send it to you first and... You know, that way you can take a look and see if you want anything taken out or not. But uh, nope. Yeah, no. Podcast Sweet, dude. One in the bucks, baby. Woo. Woo. Huh.